Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 11 says a square box has six inch sides. What's its volume? All right, so first off, there's a lot of nuance here on like, hey, what do you need to know? What things? So we're talking about a box, all right? And it says here that it has a six inch side. Now, you have to remember, if it's a square box, that means all of these are going to be six inch, all right? So everywhere you have a side, it's going to be six, all the way around, whatnot. Things to keep in mind, perimeter is the outside edge, area is the full like side of one of these things in this box, and volume is the entire box filled up. So how do we go about finding volume? Well, for finding volume of a rectangular prism, which this is, you would just do length times width times height. Now, in this case, all of those are six. So we're gonna be doing six times six times six. So six times six gives us 36 right off the bat. Multiply that by another six and you get 216, which means our final answer here is B. Number 12 says, a cylinder has a diameter of 10 inches. What's its approximate area? Now this is crazy because if we're talking here, a cylinder, all right, it's talking about area. Um, well, I'm not sure if this is a typo. Should it really actually say volume because we're talking about three-dimensional shape? Or is it talking like the surface area of this entire thing, which would be this plus this and then the rectangle right here? Let's go ahead and take a look and see which one we think it is. Area is the easier one to kind of calculate here. If I'm looking at area, the first thing I would do is find the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So if that's the case, then we're going to be doing diameter of 10 means that the radius is half of that because diameter is all the way across. So radius of 5. 5 squared is going to be 25 times that pi. Now, with that said, we do have to then multiply it by its height. Um, and do we even know what the height is? It says the approximate area, it says that it's 10 inches. It doesn't say what the height is. So you wouldn't be able to find the volume if you wanted. Um, it maybe, you know what? Maybe it means cylinder was supposed to be circle. Maybe that's the typo. If that's the typo, 25 pi, our answer here is B. Number 13, let's go ahead and take a look at what it says. It says a cylinder has a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 10 inches. What's its approximate value? I think this is going to bring us back to the typo we had yesterday. Let's take a look. It says here we got a cylinder and we got a diameter of 12. Then we have this height here that it says is 10 inches. So in this case, we are trying to find volume. It looks like we have inches and inches, so we're not switching anything there. So let's talk about how you find this. First off, you find the area of this circle. Area is going to be pi times the radius squared. Well, in this case, 12 is our diameter, meaning it goes all the way across, so half of that would be our radius. Half of 12 is six, so that number is six. We're then going to put that back into our formula. So what is six squared? It is 36. And then we still have that being multiplied by pi. Then we have this 10. So we're going to get back to this in a second. Now notice these answers don't have a pi in it. So I need to take care of that. Let's just do a rounded off version of this. We're going to do 36 times three. In other words, like 3.14 pi. So three times six is going to give me 18, carry the one. Three times three is nine, carry, bring that one down to make 10. So that's going to be 108. So we're going to say the area of this circle is about 108 square inches. Now to find the volume, you actually are just going to be stacking up that over and over by whatever the height is, which is 10. So we're going to do this 108 times 10, giving us 1,080. Now, this needs to be a little bit higher because we rounded down to that three. So we want to find, is there any answer here that is close to 1,080? Looking at this, the only one that seems pretty close to that is this guy right here, the 1,130. The 400, I think, is going to be a bit too far. So I'm going to go with a final answer here of C. 
The triangle ABC, as shown above, is a what? Equilateral triangle, a right triangle, a scalene triangle, or an isosceles triangle. So let's go through and talk about what each of these mean and see if we can tell which one this picture would be. So starting off, an equilateral triangle means that all three sides are equal to each other. Now, in this case, is it possible that A, B, and C could be equal to each other? Well, it does look like it could be, um, but just by looking at it, A and C look to be a little bit longer than B. But again, you don't want to just base it off the picture, but there's no proof that they would all three be the same. So even though it doesn't look like it visually, I also would like there to be some proof for there to be. A right triangle means that you have a 90 degree angle, which is usually represented with the square. And I don't see any of that as well, so it's not a right triangle. Scalene triangle means that all three sides are a different length. Now, that could be a possibility as well, but I'm going to show you why it's not in just a second. Isosceles means that exactly two of the sides are the same. In this case, this is going to be true, and let me tell you why. If you have two angles here that are the same, then that means that this angle up here either is the same as those two or different. But in either case, there is a rule that states if these angles are equal, then the side across from them must be equal to each other as well. So that means that if one and two are equal to each other, these angles, that's what this symbol means, that they're congruent to each other, then A and C are as well. That means our final answer here is D. So for number 15, let's go ahead and discuss some of the things that are up here. So we're looking at a quadrilateral, which just means it has four sides, which this rectangle does. It says the angles of a quadrilateral above are A, all right angles, B, each equal to 45 degrees, C, are all unequal, or D, a total of 180 degrees. Well, when you're dealing with a rectangle or a square for that matter, they always have right angles at each of these corners, which is what this little like square shape means right here. That means it's 90 degrees. So right off the bat, each one being 45 is just wrong. Also notice that every one of them has this square. So all four of them are 90 degrees. So the fact that they're unequal is also out. So we're left with the fact that they're all right angles and the fact that they total 180 degrees. Well, if you do 90 plus 90, that gives you 180. Plus two more 90s actually puts us at 360. So that guy's out as well. And from the very beginning, I told you this little thing right here means that it's a right angle, also known as 90 degrees. So our final answer here is A. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABSTAT.